All right, all right, all right. So we're about to do this SMA, and the SMA covers what we call your biogeochemical cycles, otherwise known as your water, carbon, oxygen cycle, cycle, along with your nitrogen cycle. So let's get into it. It's going to be a quick recap. So your carbon cycle and your oxygen cycle are connected, as we discussed in class. Um, plants and animals are the two main uh, organisms in play here. Plants absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through photosynthesis, and they store it as glucose or sugar in their in their body if they don't use it. Okay, animals then. We eat or we consume these plants or we eat the animals that ate the plants or the food chain and we give off carbon dioxide through respiration. So your two key vocabulary words here are photosynthesis, which is the making of sugar or the combining of, of carbon dioxide and water to make sugar. Um, so it stores carbon and cellular respiration, which breaks it down. So you got to make sure to remember your um, photosynthetic equation that was on the board in class because it won't be there um, tomorrow. So the concept is that anytime you add more plants to the equation or to the ecosystem, the more plants or the more producers you have, the less carbon that's in the environment. And similarly, if there's, if there's less carbon, then there's more oxygen. So that's a that's a positive because of the greenhouse effect of uh, <clears throat> of carbon dioxide. Similarly, if there are less plants in the environment, if we're cutting down trees, that's where this whole thing of uh, deforestation or habitat destruction comes in. If there are less plants, therefore there's going to be more carbon and less oxygen. Keeping in mind the ocean is also a big storage of, of carbon. Um, because most of the earth is actually ocean, there's a lot of ocean inside of it. So um, keep that in mind. The next cycle we're going to focus on would be your nitrogen cycle. Um, Key words here is understanding that these plants, these legumes, they have this bacteria inside there. So these, they take the nitrogen from the air and they put it into a solid form. Okay. Once in the solid form, now other plants can use that um because it, it's going to fertilize the soil or the animals can then eat these plants and then you know pass it up the food chain <clears throat> if nothing eats the plants what's going to eventually happen is that this plant may therefore then decompose where am i oh will decompose or the animals ate the plant will decompose and bacteria and fungi will then decompose the body now, there are always bacteria and fungi around, but there's a special bacteria called denitrifying bacteria. And their job is to really break down the nitrates that are stored inside um, biotic things and release it back into the atmosphere. So these guys turn it from biotic to abiotic. These bacteria, these nitrogen fixing bacteria, they turn it from abiotic to your biotic. Keeping in mind, you should know what biotic and abiotic mean. So here's some questions. It says, how is most excess nitrogen removed? Keyword you being um, excess and nitrogen. Um, so how does it get through of it? Well, be waste production. Keeping in mind, there's two forms of waste production, whether it be urine or, or, uh, or fecal matter. Fecal matter being the fancy word for poop. Um, that's how your body gets rid of anything it doesn't need. This question says, which processes are involved in the cycling of carbon dioxide between organisms and their abiotic environment? So this is a complicated question. So it's asking you, first off, you have to understand it's a carbon cycle. So how does carbon cycle move from living things to non-living things? Okay. And we said that the carbon cycle has two things. It has where carbon is absorbed and then and used by plants and then how it is broken down um, and given off by animals. So the two parts of that would be photosynthesis and respiration. So keep in mind, you got to know the parts of your cycles uh, in terms of uh, carbon, oxygen, and how they're related. Which best describes the processes um, of photosynthesis and respiration and the effect and how they affect the amount of atmospheric oxygen? So um, 
We know photosynthesis is where plants take in carbon and but release oxygen. So we know that part A is right. Photosynthesis increases atmospheric oxygen, while respiration decreases atmospheric oxygen. I like the answer. That might be the right one. We go through it quickly. Photosynthesis decreases. Um, no, it's not right. Photosynthesis respiration increases atmospheric oxygen. No. And the last one says for so it'd be A. So photosynthesis increases oxygen and respiration. So keep in mind, we animals we use the oxygen up. So the more animals, the more oxygen we're gonna consume or use. The more plants, the more they make. So that's A would be right. Um, how does an increased amount of dissolved oxygen in waterways affect a food web? So keeping in mind my food web, we're discussing um, in this relationship between the plants and the animals. So if there are more oxygen, that's going to be really good for the plants, not plants, sorry, the animals. So more dissolved oxygen allow more producers. Well, the producers doesn't um, need the oxygen. More dissolved oxygen um, allows more consumers. More dissolved oxygen results in fewer consumers. More dissolved oxygen results in fewer decomposers. So keeping in mind, who needs the oxygen? Animals do. The other word for animals would be consumers. So if there's more oxygen in the water, because dissolve means put in, but if there's more oxygen in the ocean or a lake or a pond, that means that you can sustain or you can allow more animals to live. So the answer would be B. Um, which best explains the role of plants in the carbon cycle? So we know plants are dealing with your photosynthetic situation. So plants take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. So that would be B. So they take in plants, release biological organisms. Good. Um, which would most likely happen to the carbon cycle if trees were cut down without replanting? Hopefully by now you understand if there are less trees, there's more carbon. So the amount of carbon in the atmosphere would increase. Answer would be C. Keep in mind, plants take it in. So if there's less things taking it in, then there's more of it out there. Keeping in mind, even though there are less plants, animals are still living. We're still doing what we do. We're still doing respiration. So we're still releasing the same amount of, of carbon dioxide in the air through the burning of fossil fuels or just regular respiration. It just means there's less trees to absorb it. Uh, which best explains why plants and animals need nitrogen? Well, keeping in mind, nitrogen is uh, one they need to grow. So, mm, so proteins. We talked about that. And yes, plants make proteins. Look at your legume plants, your soy, your peas, your beans, um, your tofu. They're all legumes, and uh, they make really great protein um, that's healthy for you. Which best describes the cycle that ensures fresh water is vital? Or evaporation, condensation, precipitation, water cycle. How do animals get the nitrogen their bodies need? We're consumers, so we got to eat it. All right, so that's your basic overview. Um, please look over your vocabulary words, evaporation, condensation, precipitation. Please look over your nitrogen cycle, your carbon cycle, denitrifying bacteria, nitrogen fixation. Please, please look over photosynthesis and uh, respiration. Uh, it may be a great thing to look over your nitrogen and carbon cycle and add puzzle. That's why we do these things to give you other op opportunities to learn from different ways. Um, and I look forward to a great test as you all um, uh, pass this for 75 and above and get your address down passes. All right, see you all tomorrow.